Hello sunshines and welcome to Devaliant to Play as Astrologaster by Niam Niam. This game was part of Itchio's bundle for racial justice and equality. If you would like to play the game for yourself, check out the links in the description below. Are you fascinated by the stars and medieval medicine? Then this historical visual novel is for you. Now without further ado, let's get started. Warning. This video features talk of medical advice that should in no way be used unless prescribed by a licensed medical professional. This game is just for fun and historical education purposes only. Discretion is advised. Long ago in England in 1592, there begins our tale. And all of it is true. Through the whole of London, bubonic plague did spread, covering talking, weeping sores, and leaving thousands dead. All right. <laughs> Drag left to turn the page. I see. From towns and cities, doctors they did flee, leaving their patients to die in me. But one great doctor stayed when all the cowards fled. My son took him because he was too sick to leave his bed. <laughs> Alas, tis my final hour. I will surely die. I am too far gone to recover, and for the plague there is no cure. Unless, unless a cure might be found in the stars. Choose one zodiac to diagnose the condition. How might I be cured of the plague? Okay. Uh, looks like all we got is Sagittarius. Okay. I have the plague, characterized by loss of appetite and moderate thirst and pus-filled swellings behind the ears, in the armpits and the groin. These are the symptoms of fever provoked by excess sanguinity in the liver. Sanguinity in the river, liver. Jupiter domicile in Sagittarius. This indicates a severe imbalance of the blood humor. Uh, okay. Ruler of the liver. E hmm. Yes. Okay. You chose Sagittarius. <laughs> Let me see now. According to the stars, the way to cure the plague is to treat the fever it provokes. Oh, can it be true? Might a disease so monstrous as the plague be cured by treating it as if it were an exceeding bad fever? Then I must use powerful herbs to bring the fever to crisis and break it. Let me see now. Angelica and dandelion for heat. Now, borage to provoke sweating. Infuse them in wine. Strain and distill the mixture to produce a most powerful strong water. <laughs> Are you gonna die? <laughs> I shall now go forth with my miraculous strong water to cure all London of the plague. Wow. Okay. Case summary. All right. Scene 13th, October, 1592, four o'clock. Uh, Current's case history is himself. How might he, I be cured of the plague? I judged my plague symptoms by being, as being provoked by a fever, I invented a new kind of strong water to cure it. Okay. Letter of recommendation. This curant will return for another consultation. See case summary. I shall cure Londoners of the plague. So wondrous will be my work. Their plays and songs will be written in my honor. <laughs> okay. Okay. Play. 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 
God give you good day, madam. How may I? Are you Mr. Foreman? Um, Mr. Simon Foreman, <laughs> the, the doctor? I, madam, I am indeed Dr. Simon Foreman. I bid you welcome to my consulting chambers. Uh, mistress, uh, Mistress... Allen, Mistress Avis Allen of Lambeth. Uh, pray tell me your age, if you please, madam. I am three and thirty years of age. And how might I do you service this day, Mr. Allen? Uh, pray describe your troubles to me. Well, the pain started full late last eve upon retiring to bed. Oh, not that I'm in the habit of retiring so late. <coughs> but my husband did desire a special supper of cold meats to celebrate and give thanks for... For... Uh, well, uh, in any case, it, it started in the night and it continued until dawning. That being the pain in my head. A and the chundering. A moment whilst I make note of this. Chundering. and involuntary purging. Mm. Is that all? Aye, that is all. And thinking on it, my complaint to seem most trifling. And you, you are doubtless busy with important cases. Oh, like the plague. Yea, verily, mayhap I should not have come after all. Uh, good day, Dr. Foreman. I, I beseech you, pardon me, for I have wasted your time. Really, do not go. Uh, for I assure you, madam, your case verily is important to me. And tis important to you, is it not, Mistress Allen? Else you would not have come this day. Well, uh, I... Let us consult the stars now, then, shall we? What is the cause of Mistress Allen's suffering? Let's see. Okay. Uh, so we got cancer. I was up all night with headache and chundering. What caused my suffering? Evil digestion. <laughs> God. Saturn in detriment and retrograde. This suggests a mild imbalance of, of black bile in the body. Cancer is the ruler of the stomach, potentially. So Scorpio. Mr. Allen's troubles have been provoked by anxious passions associated with her being with child. Okay, so it's like morning sickness. This indicates a disturbance of the mind. Um, ruler of the reproductive system. Um, I'm gonna say it's the reproductive system because I think it's like morning sickness. You are with child, Mistress Allen. It was the reason for your celebration last evening, methinks. I. But how did you know? I can see it in my chart, madam. There is a planet aligned with Scorpio at present. Scorpio being the constellation that rules over such matters. Uh, pray tell, how long has it been since your monthly courses? It has been 14 weeks since my courses, and yesterday I did feel the child quicken. <laughs> so, indeed, twas the cause for our celebration, as you say. <laughs> for I, I have been with child before, you see, but tis never. And Mr. Allen and I do pray this one will be born alive. <laughs> there, there, dear lady. The presence of the planet Mercury in my chart does suggest you suffer from anxious passions on account of your condition, and given your ill-favored history. I warrant twas the twin burdens of hope and fear that provoked your troubles last evening. Oh, I see. Pray take this flask of wine, madam. It has been infused with cloves, ginger root, and cinnamon. Hmm. Drink of it each morning, and you should soon feel much improved. Verily. Oh, I will do as you advise. I thank ye heartily, sir. <laughs> Fare you well, Dr. Foreman. Fare you well, Mistress Allen. Do I kill people like do i accidentally kill people in this game i wonder okay the querent did present with symptoms of headache and involuntary upward purging i judge the querent as being with child me thinks the querent is most pleased with me for the reading i have today okay querent's case history yay 55 percent to a red letter recommendation yay
<laughs> Good day, sir. You are Simon Foreman, the physician, are you not? Uh, these are your rooms. Indeed, I am he, and well met, sir. Be it Thomas Blagg, I have the honor of welcoming to my humble consulting chambers, the Dean of Rochester Cathedral. Indeed, tis I, Thomas Blagg. Uh, though it is not upon church business that I come to you this day, it is upon a matter of my own that I require counsel. I have lately been offered some very lucrative investment opportunities, and, uh, uh, well, it is said that God speaks to us through the stars, does he not? Indeed he does. It is well known that astrology is but a conduit for the word of God, as interpreted using scientific means. And now, these investments of which you speak, pray tell of them, if you please. Two merchant ships will shortly set sail on very lucrative trading expeditions. I do not possess the coin to invest in both. Hence, I must choose between them. And I must choose very wisely indeed. For sea voyagers are most perilous. And if my ship were to founder or be captured by pirates, I would lose my entire investment. I forsooth, it would be most lamentable to say nothing of the poor souls who might lose their lives. Who are naturally the uh, greater <laughs> of my concerns. Aye, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> and whither might these ships be bound? The first is bound for the Spice Islands of the East. Tis a voyage to be undertaken by a ship named the Conquering Cherub. The other is the Pride of Yarmouth. She is to bring back sugar from the Americas. Have you now the information you require? Then perchance you may divine for me upon which of these two ships our Lord God has bestowed his divine blessing. Aye, Dean Blagg, we may now consult the stars. Should Thomas Blagg invest in the voyage of the conquering cherub or that of the pride of Yarmouth? Oh, dang. Okay. Uh... Choose a reading of the stars. Okay. Selecting the highlighted section. Okay. So what is this? The ship's name should evoke a child who is victorious in battle. House of children. Okay. So this would be um, the youth of... Or the... This represents a victory. House of children. Okay, uh, so what is it, like, the, the cherub is more childlike? Um. Ooh. The ship's name should evoke a woman who partakes in a marriage. Represents femininity. Blake's investments in trading will result in a change of fortune for him, so... This represents a change in fortune. Okay. So this one didn't have victorious in battle, but this one is like a change in fortune, and that's what he's more inclined to. So let's try that. First, I must advise you that your investment will bring about a change in fortune but for you. that could you. be good or bad. I should hope so. Indeed, it is the reason for my desire to make such an investment. Uh, but in which ship? You must invest in the Bride of Yarmouth. The Bride of Yarmouth? The Bride? But how on earth... Allow me to explain, Dean Blag. In the House of Marriage, we see the planet Venus, which does represent femininity. And what is the feminine element of a wedding? It is the Bride. Ergo, the Bride of Yarmouth. D -d -d Do you now see? I assure you, my, my logic is most sound. <laughs> Doubtless it is. Though it is of no use to me, for I said nothing of a ship called the Bride of Yarmouth. The Pride of Yarmouth. the Pride of Yarmouth. Pride, with a P. Ah, verily. But I... Oh, tush, Dr. Foreman. I will not judge you harshly. Uh, for in truth, I too do oft find myself thus befuddled. <laughs> we elder gentlemen cannot expect to be as sharp as once we were, can we? <laughs> Sir, I, I hardly think we're of the same age. <laughs> Prithee, Sarah, as much as I would love to bide and discourse with you, 
It is almost time for my afternoon <laughs> nap. Uh, mayhap you would benefit from one also. Uh, good day, Dr. Foreman. And keep ye well. Okay. Alright. Uh, the querent did wish to know which two trading expeditions would make a better investment. I advise the querent to invest in the voyage of the Bride of Yarmouth. Methinks the querent took my advice a little ill. Yeah, probably. So I did not get a letter of recommendation from him. Hmm. By process of elimination, it would now seem logical for me to invest in the Conquering Cherub. Yeah. <laughs> Good morrow, sir. Pray tell, are these the consulting chambers of Simon Foreman, Doctor of Astrology and Physic? Indeed, tis I, Dr. Simon Foreman. And your name, madam? Emma Sharp of Shoreditch, sir. Five and twenty years of age. Welcome, Miss Sharp. And how may I do you service this day? Well, tis a trifle delicate. A man has asked me to be his wife. A dear, kind man. But, but... <gasps> I fear you will think me cold, Dr. Foreman. Yeah, there, madam, whatever is the matter? Well, he is exceeding advanced in years. I do worry he may not be long for the world, and if he were to die, I do not think I could bear it. <gasps> Verily, I would not. Indeed, methinks I would rather not marry him at all. Am I very heartless, Dr. Foreman? Nay, not in the least, madam. Your fears are most reasonable. The man in the winter of his life is indeed more likely to die. I assure you, madam, tis a medical fact. But, methinks you wish to know whether this man be afflicted with a grave health condition, do you not? To wit, any ailment that might soon prove fatal? Forsooth I do. That is my question precisely. Why, Dr. Foreman, tis as if you have a gift for reading minds. <laughs> uh, merely the gift of logical surmise, madam. Let us see whether a judgment of the stars may calm your fears. Uh, does Mr... Uh, what was your gentleman's name? Mr. George Middleton, a wool merchant. <clears throat> does Mr. Middleton have any ailments that might hasten his death? Oh, all right. Uh, so we got Aries here. Ruler of the head. Mr. Middleton has been bewitched. The enchantment may prove fatal. Uh, this suggests the possibility of death. This suggests a mild enchantment cast by a witch. Interesting. Uh, a Libra, ruler of the kidneys. Oh. I guess that means I've got good kidneys. Mr. Middleton suffers from dropping down of the piss, characterized by involuntary urination. It is exaggerated when combined with his fear of heights. This suggests severe vertigo, a fear of heights. Okay. Mr. Minolan suffers from a cardiac passion, a condition that may end in death. This represents the imbalance of phlegm. The illness cannot be cured. Saturn in detriment of Leo. This suggests a mild imbalance of black bile. Hmm. There's nothing here. So he pees himself. He's been bewitched. Or he has a cardiac passion. I would assume it would be this would be a thing. Cause like if they were to do the do on the wedding night, he would probably have like a heart attack. So I would assume it's this. You choose Leo. I am full sorry, madam. But the stars give heavy news. He's gonna die. Mr. Middleton suffers from a cardiac passion. Indeed, his heart may stop at any moment. He must avoid anything that might alarm or trouble his vital spirits. One shock could be enough to a kill him. Years ago, oh, crap, 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 crap. Crap. poor Mr. Middleton. I thank you for your kind understanding, Doctor Foreman, and and for your discretion in this matter. I will at once to my family go and beseech them not to make me accept Mr. Middleton's proposal. God give you a good day, Dr. Foreman. Ow. 
Okay. Uh, Quarant did wish to know whether a man she wishes to marry does suffer. What is this? Okay. Oh, do they come back? Okay, so this is just their first. I did advise the Quarant that Mr. Middleton suffers from cardiac passion that he could die at any moment. We think the Quarant was pleased with me for reading the gay I gave this day. Aw. Uh, cool. Who was that handsome man servant that passed at the door? Mayhap one day I shall have a servant that cuts such a fine figure. <laughs> Public notice. Beware! Is this man treating you a qualified licensed doctor? London has lately been in impromptu importuned by lowbrow charlatans claiming the title of doctor. These men have never attended university and therefore cannot be trusted. Any man found to be practicing medicine without a medical license shall be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Dr. Richard Smith, President's College of Physicians. A murdering wood loves doctors come. A <laughs> <laughs> what is the meaning of this warning being put about by the College of Physicians? Do they mean to do me harm? It is true that I do not have a medical license. What am I to do? Mayhap the stars will advise me. Okay. College is visiting the dark intentions toward me. What should I do? A. Um, the authority the licensed doctors of London hold is primarily owing to their wealth and privilege. There is much they do not know about physic. Um, Jupiter re represents ignorance. I mean, that's not entirely unheard of. This defies ending in war, house of ambi wealth, ambition, and religion. This represents a religion that's at the head of the- okay. Yeah, so this is looking more like, um, the capitalist angle, I guess, is the closest thing I could think of. Uh, I use my brilliant mind to forge strong relationships with my querents. This for, uh, house of relationships. The solution involved being sensitive to the needs of my querents. The moon exalted in Taurus, this advice is sensitivity. House of the servants to others. Aww. I didn't know that about. This is... House of relationships. This is Libra. I thought I was a house of kidneys. Hmm. Okay. So this could go anyway. Like, I could end this game, like, today <laughs> if I get killed. So... <sighs> They're driven by this, and I feel like this is... This is what's happening, but also, like... Like, he is... Like, he... Sh he honestly, he should go get his license. Like, that that's this long and the short of it, but to say that they're they are being dri driven by wealth, ambition, and religion. However, this man did not go to school for this. He is literally reading the stars, and I do not agree with that. <laughs> So, I must use my brilliant mind to forge strong relationships with my clearance. Follow me sensitive to the need of my clearance. The authority of the licensed doctor of London held the parent owing to their wealth and privilege and that must be known about physic. College of Physics is making a war against me. If I am to become the best doctor in London, I must find a way to end this war. The Church of England can help me for the Archbishop of Canterbury, his special power to grant the medical licenses. You know what? Uh, I think this is the better option. Mm. Oh. I see. These doctors have waged war against me, and the only way to stop them is to obtain a medical license. And in the House of Religion... Ah, yes. A reminder that the Archbishop has the power to grant such licenses. 
Mayhap I will one day find a way to petition him for one. In the meantime, I must serve my querents well, for if I do, they will doubtless favor me with letters of recommendation I can use to petition the University of Cambridge to grant me a license. All right, so either we get one from the University of Cambridge or we get the one from the Archbishop, so. I did wish to know how to protect myself from the dark intentions of the College of Physicians. The stars did advise me to petition the Archbishop of Canterbury for a medical license. I may also re receive one of my querents, whom I must serve well, give me letters of recommendation. With such letters, I may convince the University of Cambridge to grant me a license. Cool. I can't give myself a letter of recommendation. Good day to you, sir. Oh, I see you're having some difficulties. Uh, William, uh, fetch my guest a chair. Uh, no, no, he's good. I am just a little stiff. As you wish. Uh, Mr. Uh... Signor Ricardo Ferraro. I am a gentleman of Venezia, come to make a trade in London. Venice? Uh, uh, tis a fine city, I hear. And how may I do you service this day, Signor Ferraro? I am come with una problema medicale, and you are most great dottore who does cure all a London, eh? You cure a Ferraro too, see? Forsooth, I will seek to do so, signor. Pray, describe your complaints, if you please. Uh, he's burning when I make the water. Pain during urination? See, and his pain down here. Molto pain. And pain in the lower back. Oh, he has now, kidney disease. Let us see what the stars uh, can tell us. Stones, maybe. Oh, what kidney ails stones. Signor Ricardo Ferraro? Kidney stones. Uh, let's see. Ruler of the feet. This represents the imbalance of yellow bile in the bottle, but. Uh, <laughs> suffers from the gout, which is caused by hot, dry humor seeping into the f joints of the foot. Libra uh, suggested. Oh, hey, look, it's the stone. Uh, uh, Signor Fierro suffers from stones in the kidney. Uh, that's a wrong accent. The disease can occasion loss of appetite, severe pain in the kidney area, vomiting, difficulty passing urine. So it's definitely this one. Uh, Signor Fierro has dysentery. <laughs> I, I'm going with this one. It's definitely this one. Hmm. It is a case of stones in the kidney, I regret to say. Uh, but worry not, Signor. I will give you an ounce of my strong water to dislodge them. <laughs> Drink this entire flask when you rise at dawn tomorrow. Pass you out may for then an expect entire to day. the stones by way of your privy member within just a few hours. Ah, your famous strong water. This water is said to cure the plague, eh? And it's also hmm. said to. Like, uh, thank you, you Signor Foreman. And now Ricardo Ferraro bids you good day. Okay. Querent has uh, did present present with pain in the lower back and d uh, during urination. I did diagnose stones in the kidney and prescribed a flask of my strong water. Methinks the querent was a little pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. <laughs> a little pleased. Yes, yes. Was he? Did he want me to say he has a dysentery? Like. <laughs> so she is no beauty, tis true she lacks wow. But every awkward hero needs well met, Mistress Allen. Uh, pray tell, the last time I saw you, you were with child, methinks. Uh, pray tell, how fares... I would rather not talk about that, if you please. Oh, mm. I see. I am full sorry, madam. What I'm come upon... This? The matter that brings... Pardon, madam. <laughs> I prithee, madam, say on. I'm come about the new law. I know not what to do, and I would have counsel. You are in trouble with the law, madam? Nay, at least not yet, but my neighbours have begun to remark unkindly upon my absences, uh, my Sunday absences from church. I am afeard one of them may soon denounce me. Ah, it is the act against recusants you speak of, the law that obliges Catholics to attend church and take the English sacrament. 
you are of the Catholic faith, then, I take it? Aye, a Catholic. Uh, but as well, a, a law-abiding woman and a full loyal subject of the Queen. Long may she reign. I do not doubt it, madam. <laughs> but to take the Protestant sacrament... Tis heresy! So says the Pope in Rome. I risk being damned to hell if I do it, Dr. Foreman. Verily, I find myself in a most terrible bind. I see. Damned if you do, yet condemned if you do not. A cruel bind indeed. Well, let us see if the stars may untangle it for us. Should Mistress Avis Allen attend Protestant church services? <laughs> Okay. Uh, some have wrong impressions of the Allen's wealth and are envious. Okay. Indicates jealousy, suggests confusion. Mistress Allen's problem is her female neighbors. The moon represents women. Okay. Um, so people are jealous and, yeah. Uh, let's see. Avis must remain strong in her Catholic faith, for when the queen dies, her successor may revert England back to Catholicism. Um, okay. There may be a creative solution for appeasing the Pope in Rome, whilst also honoring England's Protestant legacy. Okay. Oh, this represents foreigners. And Mercury suggests creativity. Okay. Miss, uh, Mistress Ellen risks getting in trouble with the law and being punished by the authorities. House of Legal Confrontations. Okay. And it is Mistress Ellen's duty to cooperate. Advises cooperation. Okay. So... This one suggests that it's just like ignore it because your neighbors are jealous of you. But this one also like suggests that like you have um you wouldn't really get in trouble, I guess. Hmm. That's what I'm gonna choose. I fear the stars confirm your fears. You must attend church every Sunday. Lest you risk being prosecuted for being a recusant. Oh, but, but, but they're more of my soul, Dr. Foreman. Methinks I have a solution for that, madam. If you were to cross your fingers behind your back during the service, <coughs> any Protestant oath you swear would not count. Of course, you must be sure to stand at the back of the church while doing so, so that only God may see, and no one else. Oh, Sooth, what an ingenious notion. <laughs> oh, Dr. Foreman, you have saved me. You are so wise, sir. It is so. Verily, it is most admirable. But, dear lady, it is you who is to be admired. <clears throat> the strength of resolve, your devotion to your faith, and your... Madam, would you care to... See my collection of Venetian glassware? <laughs> I think I would. Indeed, I would Aren't like that very well. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the querent did wish to know whether she should comply with the law and attend Protestant church services, thereby betraying her Catholic faith. I did advise the querent to attend church, but to cross her fingers behind her back during the service. Methinks the querent is most pleased with me for reading, for the reading I gave today. Coitus post consult. Okay. Um. Well then. I am just. Wow. Thank you for joining me as I played Astralagaster by Niam Niam. The, that name the next episode will be out shortly if you enjoyed what you saw please leave a like a follow and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the new episode drops also don't forget to check out the link to the completely free discord server to chat about games and whatever else is on your mind let's keep the comments chill so no hate or spoilers as i'm not above removing these comments and the people who make them that's all for now folks and i'll see you next time